So I had chickens and I wanted to talk to you about everything that goes into owning chickens and how to design your own coop with an automatic door. So let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice is that the entire coop is up on stilts. So there's a few reasons for this. First is that I live in New York and so the snow can sometimes get up to about here and that is just not great if you ever need to open the door, if you wanna let the chickens out. It also gives the birds a little bit of room underneath the coop to hang out. Uh, it's pretty safe under here from predators. It gives them a lot of dry ground so they can dust bathe even in the winter. A little bit of sun cover. Uh, but most importantly, or at least equally as important, is it keeps animals away from the door here. So if the animals are down here on the ground, they're not gonna be able to reach up here to claw at the door or the wood. If they can smell food in there, then they are going to scratch and claw all night. But if they can't reach it, then they're gonna get very tired, but they're not gonna be able to hang for long enough to actually be able to scratch and claw their way in. So one of my favorite features about the coop is that it has an automatic door that opens like a drawbridge in a castle. And so I just have this WISE app, I can just hit the power button on my smart outlet and the door automatically opens. Now the nice thing about this is that I can set this up so that it automatically closes at night and automatically opens in the morning on a timer. But also, snow will never gather here if it snows overnight. The snow will gather here potentially, but the birds can at least step out here until I get up to, to shovel. Once the door is closed, any predators that come at night, they're not gonna be able to reach the coop to be able to claw and scratch at it overnight. If they smell food, they can get super persistent and just scratch for hours until they gain access to the coop. But if there's no way for them to stand tight up against the coop, birds are safe. This hardware here, where the birds will be walking over and will poop will gather, you really wanna use stainless hardware there. I tried using regular hardware, but poop is very acidic and it will rust this hardware in the span of about a year. Now you'll notice that there's doors all around the coop. There's one here, there's one on the side, and I have another door here where I can collect eggs. Inside the coop, you'll see that I have lots of room for the birds to perch. And you want to keep your nesting boxes where they'll lay eggs as low as possible in the coop. Birds really like to roost as high as possible at night, and so if they have a spot to roost that's above the nesting box, then they won't sleep in the nesting box. If they sleep in the nesting box, they'll poop in the nesting box, and then you'll have dirty eggs that are just kind of gross. So keep your nesting box as low as you can. Inside the nesting boxes, you'll see I have a board here that's loose so that you can remove these boards that you can clean this area out really nice. The cleaner your nesting box is, the cleaner your eggs will be. One thing that I didn't think about when I designed this coop is that the roof is angled such that snow will slide over here. If snow gathers here, I won't be able to actually open the top of the nesting box. Another problem is that when snow does slide down here, it's just gonna end up piling up exactly where I wanna stand when I'm collecting eggs in the morning. This feeder here, you're gonna to wanna to keep your food inside the coop, or at least I did. Uh, inside the coop, it's going to stay away from other animals like squirrels or birds or anything else. And so inside the coop, it's just somewhere where only the chickens will access it so you're not wasting a lot of food. I built my own feeder, but you can totally buy your own at any farm store. You'll notice that there are these vents up here. These vents are sized exactly for a two by four. So if I have a two by four, I could set it in here on really chilly nights in the winter, and I can just lock it in like this just because you want to keep any kind of really strong drafts away from the birds. They need to have a significant amount of ventilation, but you don't want them to have a direct uh, breeze blowing on them overnight. They can get frostbite very easily. When you get new birds, you want a place where you can put them that'll isolate them from uh, your existing birds. Because existing birds, they just love to assert their dominance. They want to make sure that they're at the, the highest spot in the pecking order. And so they will be just straight up nasty to the young birds. And so if you could have a spot in the coop where you can keep them separated, you want, we want them to be able to see each other so they can make visual cues, but you don't want them to have physical access because they can actually draw blood and it can get really violent. Something else that you're going to want to have is a spot where you can take and isolate a sick chicken. So it's probably not going to be in the coop or even in the run. You're going to, it's going to want to be a separate spot somewhere on your property because if one bird gets sick, you don't want that bird to transmit whatever it has to the other birds. You want to keep your flock healthy and happy. So. 
So the way this door works, this is actually an antenna motor out of an old Volvo that I got out of the junkyard. You can see I have a 3D printed uh, hinge here so that as the door opens and closes, that hinge will keep the, the antenna pulling straight. The antenna is just mounted in a single spot so that it can hinge up and down. And I can take you inside now in the garage so I can show you the electronics of how I wired this up. This is my wise plug that feeds into another mechanical timer relay. Now originally what this timer relay was for, this was hooked up to a photo sensor that you would use in an automatic light, like for a garage light or something. Um, and the idea was that this would turn on 30 minutes or an adjustable time after sunset. Now the problem with that kind of system is that if you had a, uh, a really heavy storm, then the door would actually close in the middle of the day and lock the birds out. Uh, that wasn't ideal, and so what I ended up doing is I just turned this time all the way down to zero so I can just run the door immediately from the app. The rest of these electronics here are just electronics that came with the antenna that came out of the junkyard. All these wires just run out to the coop. I will post links in the description for all the electronics that you're going to need. Um, you don't have to use these exact things, but that will at least get you started. I also have a little 12 volt LED light here. What the light does is it tricks the birds into thinking that days are longer than they are. The more light there is in the day, the more eggs the chickens will lay. You'll notice that there are slots in this ramp. Uh, the slots help the birds get grip. In the winter, they can, uh, this bridge can get a little bit slippery, uh, but they do need a way to be able to get up into the coop. Something else to consider when you have chickens is that they love to be in high places. So I've come out before, the birds will be on top of this roof. I've seen them up on top of the garage and they've even found their way up into the trees. Younger birds, have a, a, they're much more able to jump high and they, they're a little bit lighter so they can fly a little bit. Um, they can easily jump the fence over here. So you really need to consider um, the area around the birds. Uh, a lot of times they can be afraid of string and things like that. If they see something in the air that's not, not very easy for them to perch on, then they might be swayed away from that. Um, and so just consider um, that birds can jump pretty high, especially when they're younger. When you first bring the chickens home, you're gonna wanna leave them locked in the coop for at least a week, maybe two weeks. Then they'll recognize that that is home and that's, that's where they wanna roost at night. They'll know it's safe. Now, the first time you let them out, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. Uh, they're not gonna know how to get back in once they come down. Uh, a lot of times if you pick up a bird and just set it up here, the other birds will see that that's where they need to go to get back into the coop. Now, one of the most important things for birds is water. And so they've got a couple different style of nipples that you can use for the birds to access water. Um, this horizontal style didn't freeze for me. The vertical style can form icicles, and then if the birds can't access water, that, that could be one of the biggest dangers for your birds. Uh, I have one of these bucket heaters. Um, this is just designed to just sit in the bucket and keep the water above freezing all winter long. Um, it worked great for me. I'll put a link in the description to where you can get one of those. You might notice that there aren't actually any chickens in this video, and so I wanna talk about some of the things that you really need to consider if you're thinking about getting birds. It's very romantic and very sweet to think that you're going to let birds run around and be free and just free roam your property and just Run, just have as much room as they want in the world. Unfortunately, they're very low on the food chain. They don't have a very good way to fight back. And so I've dealt with raccoons and hawks and foxes. There's a lot of things in nature that really want an easy meal. And so you really need to fence these things in. I started, I had a fence like this because I thought that I could prevent a hawk from flying in and attacking my birds when they're just dust bathing or whatever. Didn't work very well. At one point I had a net that was hanging down over this entire thing to prevent hawks from swooping in, but that still doesn't prevent foxes. Foxes can jump fences. There's just so much out there that's trying to hurt your birds. You really need to fence them in entirely. Now something to consider when talking about fencing, you want the fence to be high enough that you can actually walk in and explore around the coop. Sometimes you have to maybe catch a bird to inspect her to maybe check for if one's injured. Sometimes you wanna just dump in food like grass clippings or whatever. The golden rule of owning chickens is generally to use as much fencing as you can afford. If you can have a fence that's all the way 
across your entire yard and over the top, that's great. I know most of us can't do that, so as big of an area as you can have uh, is ideal. I also wanted to talk about these little decoy ideas. This guy didn't do a dang thing at all. He's completely useless, so don't waste your money on him. The video clips that you saw in this video of the hawk flying into this and the raccoon reaching over there, they're all taken on wise cams. I would totally encourage you if you have Wi-Fi near your coop to set up some kind of camera so that you can check on your birds from inside. It can be nerve wracking to have chickens just wondering if they're okay, wondering what they're getting into. And so to be able to just pull it up on your phone and see what the birds are up to, uh, it's just, it's, it's awesome. So I'll put a link in the description where you can get those. That's all I've got about coops. I think chickens are super awesome to have as pets. It's something where you can kind of leave them alone and they kind of do their own thing. They're, they're pretty independent. Uh, it's, it's super awesome to be able to take any kind of leftover food or vegetable peels or just anything that, you're, that maybe is questionable in the fridge that you isn't bad yet, but you don't want to throw it away. You can just bring it out. Your chickens will recycle it and feed it back to you as breakfast. It's just an awesome, awesome feeling. Um, I hope you found this helpful.